<laughs> What's up YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 largest tanks of World War II. World War II was pretty much the largest conflict in human history and World War II also saw the largest use of armored fighting vehicles. Now during the Second World War there were some vehicles that were larger than others and way more powerful. So on this list, I'm just going to go over the top 10 most powerful tanks of the Second World War. So let's go into it. Number 10, the Stramoza Wagen 606 4 mit 38 centimeter RW61, also known as the Sturmtiger or in German the Sturmtiger. The Sturmtiger was a super heavy rocket assault gun designed between 1943 and 1944. Its main armament was one 380mm RW61 L 5.4mm uh, 5-4 rocket launcher or Nebelwerfer as you would call it in German. Uh, this tank only had 14 rounds of its ammunition. Its armor thickness was between 62 and 150 millimeters. Its weight was 68 tons. Its height was 2.85 uh, meters or 9 feet 4 inches. Its speed was 40 kilometers per hour or 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour. And it had a crew of 5. Unfortunately for the Stamp Tiger, only 19 of these vehicles were produced. The Sturm Tiger, as you can see, is basically a giant Nebelwerfer, or giant rocket launcher. It was a self-propelled gun specifically designed to level enemy fortifications. Its 380mm gun, or 380mm Nebelwerfer, or rocket gun, could literally level just about any of these small villages seen on either the eastern or western front. Theoretically speaking, that 380 millimeter round from the Nebel Ruffer, uh, from the Sturm Tigers Nebel Ruffer, could easily level even a modern tank, for example, an Abrams. Now, I know some of you may think that's off, but keep in mind, Abram tanks and even some, um, even recently, some German Leopard 2 tanks have been destroyed in Syria and Iraq by uh, jihadists using uh, vehicle bound IEDs. Many of those vehicle bound IEDs have roughly the same explosive yield as these 380 millimeter rocket shells fired by the Sturm Tiger. Now keep in mind during the Second World War the Germans did not have the resources to mass produce the Stramoza Wagen Sturm Tiger. So unfortunately, only 19 of these tanks were made. But just imagine what would have happened if the Germans had the resources to mass produce the Sturm TV. I'm not saying it would have saved them, but it would have caused a hell of a lot more of a ruckus on both the eastern and western fronts towards the end of the Second World War. The next tank on the list is my favorite German tank of World War II, and that is the Panzer Jäger Tiger Off B, or Off B, also known by its popular name, the Jag Tiger. The Jag Tiger was a super heavy tank destroyer designed between 1943 and 1944. Its main armament was one massive 128 millimeter 12.8 centimeter Pac-44 L-55 main gun. Its armor thickness was 250 millimeters maximum. Its speed was 34 kilometers per hour or 21 miles per hour. Its height was 9.2 feet and its weight was 71 tons. It had a crew of six, but unfortunately, only 70 to 88 of these vehicles were produced. Now, keep in mind, 71 tons, the Yag Tiger weighed more than the modern Leopard 2, which is the more, is the, which is the more advanced tank in the current German army. 
Now, during the Second World War, the Yak Tiger was like, I mean, this is just one of the tanks you didn't want to come across. One shot from that 200, from that 128 millimeter uh, gun could easily cut through just about any Allied tank. In fact, the only tanks that could probably destroy a Yak Tiger would be an IS-3 uh, if it had been mass produced enough during the Second World War. Um, that's really it. Just the IS-3 and maybe the um, the uh, IS-152. And I heard, I've heard some tank enthusiasts say the SU-100 could theoretically destroy or disable a Yak Tiger if it got close enough. But just one shot from that 128 millimeter gun would fuck your shit up if you were to get, if the Yak Tiger's crew were to spot you first. Remember in World War II, it was, it, it, it was, when it came to tank warfare during the Second World War, it was all about spotting your enemy before they spotted you. If you were spotted, you were gone. Just imagine if you were, um, just imagine if you were an American tanker just driving around in your little M4 Sherman or your M3 or M5 Stewart light tank. Or just imagine if you were a Soviet tanker driving around in your T-3485 or even worse, a BT-7 or a T-60 light tank. And all of a sudden you see the big ass barrel of a Yak Tiger just poking out of the foliage. You know your foot. So yeah, this is why this is my favorite German tank of the Second World War. Just one shot, you know. One shot is over. Just doesn't matter who you are or what tank you're driving in. That one shot, that 128 millimeter gun could penetrate up to 250 millimeters of armor maximum at the closest um, tank killing range. That's just unbelievable at the time. The next tank on the list is the A-39 Tortoise, or sometimes referred to as the P-1. This was a British prototype super heavy assault gun from 1943-1945. This vehicle's main armament was one 94mm Ordnance QF 32 pounder main gun. Its armor thickness was 33 millimeters upwards to 228 millimeters. Its weight was 78 tons. Its height was 3 meters or 9 feet 10 inches. Its speed was 19 kilometers an hour or 11.8 miles per hour. It had a crew of 6 and only a few prototypes were built in all. The Tortoise was pretty much, I, if you ask me personally, this is basically the most powerful British tank designed during the Second World War. Now unfortunately, it never entered service and it was pretty much just a prototype. But it was pretty much the best of what the British could do in terms of assault guns. Keep in mind the assault guns and tank destroyers towards the end of the war they did have their, their, their place on the battlefield. Everyone usually talks about the Mighty Tiger or in terms of, of standard tanks, the Mighty T-34 or the Mighty, um, well I won't say the Abrams, I won't say the Sherman is Mighty, you know, but um, the, I guess the mediocre Sherman, you know, but assault guns had their place. And in terms of British assault guns, this was the best that you could do when it came to British tank warfare. I mean, the British had other designs, but in terms of the ones they've actually built and had planned to mass produce, you know, this is the best, you know, this is, this is also one of my favorite British tanks too. So, you know, the tortoise, yes. The next tank on the list is the French Char 2C FCM 2C. This tank was a prototype super, well it wasn't really a prototype, but it was actually produced. This vehicle was a super heavy tank designed between 1917 and 1919. Now this was pretty much just a World War I holdover. You know, this vehicle was designed during the First World War, but was used during the Battle of France. 
in 1940, its main armament was one 75 millimeter Canon D75 uh, model 1897. Its armor thickness was 15 to 45 millimeters. Its weight was uh, 69 tons. Its height was a massive 13 feet high. I mean, this is one of the, this is pretty much one of the taller tanks of the Second World War. Its speed was 15 kilometers per hour, or, or an hour, or 9.3 miles per hour. Its crew was 12, and only 10 of these vehicles were built. Now, keep in mind, this list is not just about power, it's also about size. And in terms of size and the height, this of the Shard 2C, the Shard 2C was one of the largest of the French tanks designed or in or used during the Second World War. This is a World War I tank used in World War II. Now, during the Battle of France, about six to eight of these vehicles were activated, of which six were destroyed on, a, on their way to the front line, and two were destroyed in combat, you know. These vehicles were pretty large, but unfortunately their thin armor is what caught, their thin armor was their Achilles heel. 15 to 45 millimeters isn't enough even in 1940 to stop most German anti-tank guns. And so the 88 millimeter flak became the doomsday weapon for the two tanks that actually were used on the front line. The other six tanks were destroyed by the German Luftwaffe while they were, be while they were being transferred via railroad tracks to the front line during the Battle of France. But just imagine what would have happened if that didn't occur. Just imagine if these six tanks had actually made it to the front line along with the other two that were also destroyed. Yeah, these vehicles would have probably have been destroyed or captured. But just imagine being a German tanker driving around in your Panzer 1, 2, or 3, or early model Panzer 4, and having, and having to go up against a beast like this, you know. In 1940, this tank was nothing to mess around with. In fact, if it wasn't for the Luftwaffe, the Luftwaffe, those German tankers I mentioned in their what-up scenario, would have been screwed. So, yeah. Let's go on to the next tank. Keep in mind, keep in mind right now, we're just going on size at this point in the list. And the next tank on the list is the British TOG-1. The TOG-1 was a prototype super heavy infantry support tank designed between 1939 and 1941. Its weight was 80 tons. Its main armament was one 75mm uh, gun mounted in the chassis. Its height was 3 meters or 9 feet 10 inches. Its armor thickness was 12 to 62 millimeters pretty light, you know, when compared to the Yak Tiger mentioned earlier on the list. And its speed was 12 kilometers an hour or 7.4 miles per hour. Pretty slow on the list. You know, even though it is, is no Tortoise, it's no Yak Tiger, you know, in terms of power, it's definitely no of Sturm Tiger, but it did have its weight, you know, in terms of weight, 80 tons, it weighed more than the previous tanks, even more than the tortoise tank, by, by only two pounds, you know, by only two tons. It only weighed two tons more than the tortoise tank you mentioned earlier, the A39 tortoise, you know. But in terms of power, the tortoise would easily sweep this tank, but since they're both, both are British tanks, that would never happen, you know, outside of a video game like World of Tanks or War Thunder is the TOC-2. The TOC-2 was a super heavy prototype infantry tank designed in 1941. Um, this vehicle was basically just an upgraded TOC-1 design. You know, Its weight was still 80 tons. Its main armament was actually reduced to a 57 millimeter six pounder anti-tank gun. Its armor thickness was increased from 12 uh, millimeters upwards to 114 millimeters. 
Its height was 3.5 meters or 10 feet. Its speed was 14 kilometers an hour or 8.6 miles per hour, an increase over the previous tag. But yeah. Um, the tag too, like, when it comes to British tanks, I, I just feel like the British didn't know what they were really doing. I mean, why would you downgrade the armament? The only thing that may keep this tank on at this number or at this particular number on the list is its weight. Remember, this is the top 10 largest tank, so I'm going to buy weight and height, not just firepower, weight and height. This a tank weight 80 tons and it was um, slightly taller than the previous tag on the list. And that's the only reason why it's here. In terms of firepower, the Yak Tiger and pretty much every tank on the list would probably sweep this tank in one shot, you know. But yeah, the Tag 2. Um, I can't really say the Tag 2 is my favorite British tank. I mean, that puny 57mm gun is just a buzzkill when it comes to tank warfare, you know. Um, the next tank on the list is my favorite American tank of the Second World War, and that is the T-28, also known as the um, the T-95, was a prototype super heavy assault gun designed between 1944 and 1945. Its main armament was one 105mm T-5 E1 main gun. Its armor thickness was a massive 305 millimeters you know pretty much the thickest armor on any tank at that time its speed was 13 kilometers an hour or 8 miles per hour its crew was only 4 uh, the T95 or the T28 was basically the most powerful American assault gun designed during the second world war keep in mind 105 millimeter guns were overkill at that time. I mean, this tank could probably kill um, a Yak Tiger at close range or even at mid range. I mean, one shot, I, I don't think the 105 millimeter gun would penetrate all 250 millimeters of armor, but I'm pretty sure a, the, the crew of a T95 could. Uh, find the Yag Tiger's weak point and put a hole in it and basically disable that vehicle. You know. But yeah, I mean, just imagine if you were a a, a, a German tanker driving around in your, your Panther or your Panzer IV or Panzer III or any of the weaker um, older model German tanks that were around in 1944 and 1945. I mean, if this tank had been mass produced and had been adopted, that this tank, this assault gun would be your worst nightmare. I mean, your 75 millimeter gun is not penetrating that 305 millimeters of armor, you know. The only tanks that would have any success against this tank would be the crews of various Tiger 1, Tiger 2, and Yak Tiger tanks. You know, um, yeah, the Germans did have anti-tank rocket launchers and anti-tank um, recoilless guns like the Panzer Streck and the Panzer Faust, you know. And the 88mm flak could still do some harm to this tank if it were to hit the weak points. But in terms of tank-on-tank -tank warfare, outside of the Jag Tiger and some of the upgraded Tiger 1 and 2 variants, no other German tanks would be able to scratch this vehicle. So, yeah. The next tank on the list is the Japanese Type 100, also known as the OI tank. The Type 100 was a prototype super heavy tank from 1939-1940. Its main armament was one 104.9mm main gun. Its armor thickness was 35 upwards to 200mm of armor. Its speed was 25 kilometers an hour or 15.5 miles per hour and it had a crew of between 5 and 6. This is pretty much the most powerful Japanese tank of World War II. Um, yeah, I mean just, it's just one of these, it's, 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 um, it's, just, it's a main battle tank 
you know, uh, in terms of Japanese tanks from the time, this was just an overkill. Keep in mind, on the Pacific Front during the Second World War, most Japanese tanks were either Type 95s, Hagos, or Type 97s, you know. You had some tankets, like the Type uh, 94, but those are pretty useless against tanks. And you had some self-propelled guns, but they were very limited, like for example, the Type 5 um, self-propelled gun, which only about five of those were built. And they weren't really issued on the front lines on the actual battlefields, they were issued to protect the homeland. The OI tank, on the other hand, was reportedly sent to Manchuria to halt the Soviet invasion. And that's where this rare photograph comes from. I just find this, this photograph from a Russian website. And according to the website, this is a photograph of two Russian soldiers standing in front of the captured OI tank at what the Soviets called the Battle of Fort um, Koto, you know, in 1944 and 1945. 1945, I meant to say. Um, so this is probably the only photograph I can find of the, um, the OI tank. According to Soviet archives, the OI tank had actually been dug in and used as a fortified position. So that means it wasn't being used in its intended role as a um, infantry support tank or a main battle tank for that time period, which is kind of sad. Um, according to Soviet archives, um, I don't know what happened to this tank. No one knows what happened to this tank after it was captured. Most likely it was scrapped. You know, just to be honest, a lot of Japanese equipment captured by the Russians or the Americans or the Australians or the Brits, they, they mostly scrap those tanks, you know. So, a sad fate for the OI, but a cool and interesting super tank from the Second World War. The next tank on the list is the French Char FCM F1. This was a prototype super heavy tank designed between 1938 and 1940. This vehicle's main armament was one 90 millimeter DCA model 1926 L50 main gun. It also had a second turret mounting a 47 millimeter SA-37 model 1937 anti-tank gun. Its armor thickness was 100 to 120 millimeters. Its weight was a massive 139 metric tons. Its speed was 24 kilometers an hour or 14.9 miles per hour. Um, this was pretty much the most powerful French tank designed during the Second World War. Unfortunately for the French, it was completed, at least the first prototype was completed, during the fall of France, you know. So the French were never able to mass produce this tank. It, it was never used in combat either, but it was finished during the Second World War, and is the reason why it's on this list. The Char FCM F1, as I said, was the most powerful French tank. Um, it was one of the rare double turreted tanks, or double turreted main tanks, main battle tanks from that time period. Um, this super heavy tank, I mean, just look at it. It just, it reeks of overpoweredness. And keep in mind, this is 1940. At the time, the Germans were still mostly using the Panzer 1s, 2, 3s, and early model Panzer 4s with 50mm guns, you know. So just imagine if this tank had been mass produced. Just imagine if you were a German tanker and you had to go up against this tank in 1940. I mean, pretty, I'm pretty sure the 88mm um, anti-tank guns or the 88mm flax could easily um, defeat this tank, theoretically speaking, if it were to hit it from various angles. Um, well, no, it could, because the 88 mil the 88 millimeter could pierce over 100 millimeters of armor. So, without the 88 millimeter flak, um, most German tanks would pretty much be screwed if they came up against this tank in a what if tank battle scenario in 1940. But luckily for the Germans, that didn't happen. And this tank was most likely scrapped after France was captured by the German army. Next tank on the list is uh, one of the most powerful German tanks in history. 
and that is the German tank, the E-100. The E-100 was an experimental super heavy tank designed in 1945. Its main armament was one massive 150 millimeter, 15 um, centimeter KWK-44, you know, L-38 main gun. Its armor thickness was almost as thick as the Yak Tiger at a at between 90 and 240 millimeters, only 10 millimeters off from the 150 millimeters of armor that the Yak Tiger had. Its speed would have been 50 kilometers an hour if it had been completed, or 24.8 miles per hour. Its crew was between five and six. Even when it was evident that the war was turning against the Germans, they continued to develop new weapons for the fight. The E-100 super heavy tank was one of these. Although the factory was overrun by the Allies before the prototype was finished, the E-100 was an impressive weapon. It would have carried a 150 or 170 millimeter gun on a hull that was over 30 feet long and had armor over 10 inches thick. But the E-100 would have suffered from the same problem which plagued the Tigers, lack of power. The giant metal monster's engine was only 800 horsepower, even though the weight of the tank would have been over 140 tons. No, no, it wasn't completed. The E-100 was never completed. Uh, two hulls were captured, and that was pretty much it. This tank, uh, if it had been completed, I mean... It would have been, um, if you were an American tanker, this would have been a nightmare to encounter on the battlefield. One shot from that 150 millimeter gun, it would put you in the grave, son. That's it. Your tank is gone if you get hit with that 150 millimeter gun. There's no stopping that round. There's no American tank outside of the T-95 slash T-28 that would be able to withstand a hit from the 105 millimeter and it is you know and the 105 millimeter would theoretically still disable that tank if it were to hit the track or um, or if it were to explode anywhere near the gun barrel just blowing it off if not disabling it and finally number one the most the largest most powerful most overpowered tank of world war ii and you already knew what it was. I don't even know why I'm even um, stretching it. But the most powerful tank of World War II was the Panzerkampf Wagen 8 Maus. The Maus, or Maus, as it's pronounced, you know, the word Maus means mouse in German. The Maus was a super heavy tank designed between 1944 and 1945. Its main armament was one 128 millimeter KWK 44 L-55 main gun. Its armor thickness was 190 millimeters upwards to 460 millimeters. Did you hear that? Did you hear it? 460 millimeters, you're not killing that. Its speed was 8.1 miles per hour, which is pretty slow, but, you know, look how big it is. You know, this ain't going to be moving no, this tank ain't moving no 20, 30 miles per hour. Its crew was 6. Its weight was a massive 188 tons, or 207 short tons, or 185 long tons. I mean, the... The Maus is just, you know, the Maus would be, you know, the, the Maus would be, it, it, the Maus is like the prophet of all tanks, you know. It, it, in World War II, this was like, the Maus would be like Godzilla on the battlefield if it had been mass produced. But unfortunately, only two of these bad boys were ever built and they were never used in combat, you know. Only one Mayus tank survives today, but just imagine what could have been. Just imagine, you know, being a poor defenseless uh, Russian in your T-34-85 
or even your IS-152. Just imagine being a poor American tanker in your in your little Sherman, your little M4 Sherman, or your T-10 tank destroyer, you know, or even worse, your M3 Stewart light tank. And all of a sudden, you see this big ass um, cheese grater with a, a turret on top coming over the foliage, and you know there's nothing you can do to stop it. You know, just one round from that 128 millimeter gun. And your ass is gone. That's just you know one round from that 128 millimeter gun, and your ass is done. That's it. It's over. It's nap nap time. That's it. Your tank is just scrap metal. You will be forgotten by your family at some point. That's it. You're gone. But unfortunately for the Allies, the Maus was never mass produced, and that's it. Um, eventually, the Mayus tanks ended up in the hands of the Soviet Union, and um, that's it. Only one Mayus tank survives, and it's actually made from components of both Mayus tanks that were captured. Um, the Soviets did test the tank in 1945 and again in 1946-47, but that was it. They didn't find anything useful from it. It was basically just a giant monstrous tanks that the Nazis or, or the National Socialist of Germany had hoped to mass produce. And that's it. These were the top 10 most powerful, the largest tanks used during the Second World War. Keep in mind, I was going by weight and height, not just by the power of their main guns. So yeah, some of you may not like the uh, numbering or how I laid it out, but I'm just going by weight, height, and size rather than their firepower you know so yeah which tanks did you like the most as I already mentioned my favorite tank is the Yak Tiger on this list just because I like the name Yak Tiger I also like the name the um I also like the Sturm Tiger or the Sturm Tiger as you pronounce it in German um I like the Mayus but you know I, I've known about it since I was a kid, so it's kind of bland, you know. It's it's cool, but it's 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 bland cool. It's cool bland, you know. It's something you already know about. Um, and I don't like the T28, you know. The other tanks on the list are just, you know, you already know about them, and that's pretty much it. If you have any ideas for any future videos, please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing out. You all have a good day.